In this video, I'm going to talk about the random number generators in Excel. So first, let's start from the most basic random number generator. I'm going to type run here. And this is where I'm going to start with the random number. And uh, to generate a random number in Excel, simply type equals RAND and then give an empty pair of parentheses and then enter. So this command would give you a random number between 0 and 1. So it has a equal chance of being anything that falls between 0 and 1. Now we have 0.529.8628. Now with this random number generator, what can we do? We can use this to simulate various random events. For example, if I want to simulate a purchase event, whether a customer purchase a product or not, let's say this customer is flipping a coin each time to decide whether to purchase a product. And then if it's head, it's a purchase. If it's tail, it's a no purchase. We can actually use this random number generator to simulate that purchase event. Here's what we do. So let's say purchase, no purchase. So you might have noticed each time when I type something or when I refresh a cell, this random number generator will regenerate the random number. And sometimes it is desirable to do this, but sometimes it is not. In this case, let me stop this random number generator from getting refreshed without me asking it to refresh the random number. So what I do is go to File, and then Options. And then within Options, go to Formulas. And within Formula, you can see that on top of it, there's Calculation Options. The workbook calculation can be automatic. And automatic except for data tables, or it can be manual. So here, let's change this to manual and uh, uncheck this recalculate workbook before saving. So now, when I select this option, Excel's workbook will no longer automatically recalculate the random number generators. It will only recalculate that when I ask for it. Click OK. And the way to ask for a random number to regenerate is to use the F9 key. And here, if I refresh anything, let's say if I type in something here, let's say I type in run between, you see that random number is no longer refreshing. And uh, the only way that I ask it to refresh is to hit the F9 key. Now you see the random number is refreshing each time I hit the F9 key. Here's how to simulate a purchase event. We know this random number here, it has an equal chance to be between 0 and 1, which means it would have a 50% chance to be below 0.5, and then a 50% chance to be above 0.5. So therefore, we can use that random number to simulate a coin flip purchasing event. So it will be equal to, here we can use if this random number is larger than 0 0.5, then it's a purchase. Otherwise, it's a no purchase. So here I've used text to represent the purchase event. You can use instead zeros and ones to represent this. Let's say a purchase event is a one, a no purchase event is a zero. So then we can use zeros and ones and then enter. So you see this random number is below 0.5. So it's a no purchase. So purchase is set as zero. 
and uh, we can similarly do the no purchase but in this case no purchase is simply equal to one minus the purchase so which basically means if a purchase is one no purchase will be zero if purchase is zero no purchase will be one so they are always the opposite and now if i keep hitting the f9 key you can see this simulation with a refresh so now we have 0.847 so it's a purchase if I keep hitting it you can see the event or the change with this random number that has been generated what if this purchasing event is not 50 50 what if the purchasing event is let's say 80 percent so let's say we want to look at 80 percent purchasing event so how do we simulate that purchase? We can do that with the same random number. And the only change we need to do is to set the threshold a little bit differently. So instead of using 0.5 as the threshold, we change that threshold. Then we're going to simulate a condition where a buyer has 80% chance of purchase will be equal to if parenthesis. And what we're going to do is, again, for this random number, now we want 80% chance for this random number to indicate a purchase. All we need to do is to allow that random number to be larger than 0.2. So now random number would have 80% chance to be larger than 0.2. And that if it's larger than that, then purchase is a one. Otherwise purchase is a zero and enter. So now with this purchase, again, I can do one minus purchase would be the indicator for no purchase. So here, as you can see, the random number is 0.337. If it's a 50-50% chance, the simulation says no purchase. However, if the purchasing event is 80% from more likely, we have a lower threshold of 0.2. So this number is larger than 0.2 then the simulation says this is a purchase and correspondingly no purchase has an indicator of zero so as you can see this random number between zero and one is quite flexible you can even use this random number generator to generate a random number that goes far higher and the way to do this is to multiply this random number generator by something and uh, let's say I'm going to generate a random number between 0 and 100. How do we do this? I will again use this formula to generate a random number between 0 and 1. Now if we want this to be between 0 and 100, we simply need to multiply that by 100 and then enter. Now you see I have generated a different random number and this number would have a range of 0 to 100 simply because 0 to 1 when it's multiplied by 100 it would be would it would have a range of 0 to 100 that's what we did and then if you, i use f9 on this you're going to see these numbers would keep refreshing all right so the next formula commonly used for random number generation is called rand between equals rand between and for this purpose rand between would generate a random integer so instead of a number with decimal points here you're going to get integers and the two parameters for rand between is a bottom in the top let's say i want to generate a random number between 5 and 50 and now if i close this and hit enter and now i get an integer between 5 and 50 if i use f9 you can see this number keeps changing but it always falls between 5 and 50. and the third random number generator that we want to introduce is to generate a normal random number the reason why we need a random number generator to create random numbers from a normal distribution 
is because this random number generator, whatever it generates, it generates a flat distribution. That, that is, if you plot out a histogram of a thousand random numbers generated using RAND, you are going to see the distribution is approximately even between 0 and 1. But that is often not the reality that we look at. For example, people's heights and weights are normally distributed. Test scores are normally distributed. And people's purchasing quantities are often normally distributed. So a normal distribution is far more useful when we are simulating actual events. So here's how you create a normal random number. So it's equal to, we're going to use the formula norm.inv. This is really stands for a inverse of a normal distribution. And uh, this random number generator has three parameters. Uh, first is a probability. The probability, of course, would fall between 0 and 1. And then the mean and then the standard deviation of the normal distribution. So I will put in a random probability using this RAND formula. Remember, it's between 0 and 1. So this would give you a random probability, comma. And most straightforwardly, let's say I generate a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, and then enter so now I have a normal random number. And uh, if you want to generate a series of normal random numbers, simply copy this around. I have set the spreadsheet not to refresh the number unless I ask for it. So now if I use F9, you can see all these random numbers are different. And we can actually even take a look at the distribution of these random numbers by plotting out a histogram. So let's go to insert and choose this. And this is a histogram. So as you can see, it's approximately bell-shaped distributed. If I use F9, you are going to see this histogram shifting each time around. Okay. So so as you can see, we can generate a normally distributed random number. If I use a RAND formula to generate random numbers, it will not be normally distributed. It will give you a uniform distribution that is flat. Let me just copy this down and use F9 to refresh this. So now, let me generate a new histogram based on these just simple rent gener number generators. So insert again a histogram. So as you can see here, this distribution gives you things between 0 and 1. If I use F9 keys, you're going to see this distribution to shift around. So a better way to look at this is, let's say I define a bin width to be Point 0.1 and now I go back you're going to see these random numbers and F9 since I only have a relatively low number of random numbers you can see this distribution shifts around a lot but overall this is a uniform random number between 0 and 1 we can generate an, a uniform random number we can generate a normal random number what if for the normal random number, we want this to have a specific mean and a variance for the normal distribution? Now, what we do is we can, again, use the norm IMV, and then we can generate a random probability. And now you can specify any kind of a mean and a standard deviation you want for this normal distribution. Let's say we want the mean to be 10 and the, the standard deviation to be 5. And then if we close this, now we have a normal random number with mean 10 and standard deviation 5. If I use F9, you are going to see this number. Let's just focus on this number. 
you're going to see this number moving around. It will have a far higher chance to be near 10 and much less likely to be moving further and further away from 10. So, so now hopefully that gives you a general idea of how we generate random numbers. The reason why we look at this is directly associated with running experiments. Because of various random components, as I mentioned in the lecture, traffic accidents, raining, weather events, competitors running ads. So there are various random events. The experiment results coming out are never deterministic. There's always a random shift. So these random number generators would help us. That concludes this video.